Now we will discuss the covalent bonding model. A covalent bond is formed by the sharing of electrons between two non-metal atoms. Contrary to the ionic compounds, the covalent compounds exist as molecules. Molecules are the smallest unit of a covalent compound. For example, if you take a sample of chlorine gas, it exists as individual Cl2 molecules. Let us now discuss how a covalent bond forms between two hydrogen atoms. Let's say we have two hydrogen atoms approaching each other. Each hydrogen atom is made up of a positively charged proton and a negatively charged electron. According to Coulomb's law, the electrostatic force of attraction between two charged particles is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. That is, electrostatic force F is directly proportional to Q1 Q2 over R square where Q1 and Q2 are individual charges and R is the distance between them. Therefore, when the two hydrogen atoms are far apart from each other, the charges in one hydrogen atoms do not attract or repel the charges in the other atom. In other words, there is no force of attraction or repulsion between the hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen atoms are said to be isolated from each other. What I am going to do now is plot a graph with the combined energy of two hydrogen atoms on the y-axis and the distance between the two hydrogen atoms that is internuclear distance on x-axis. I am going to assign 0 kilojoules of energy for the two hydrogen atoms when they are isolated from each other. This is our reference point. As these two atoms approach each other, at a certain distance, the forces of attraction and repulsion begin to arise. The attractive forces are the nucleus of hydrogen 1 attracting the electrons on hydrogen 2 and vice versa, which is the nucleus of hydrogen 2 attracting the electrons on hydrogen 1. The repulsive forces are the electron of hydrogen 1 repelling the electron of hydrogen 2 and the nucleus of hydrogen 1 repelling the nucleus of hydrogen 2. The attractive forces tend to bring the two hydrogen atoms closer and the repulsive forces tend to push the two hydrogen atoms apart. When the atoms approach each other, at the beginning, the attractive forces dominate the repulsive forces. As a result, the atoms move closer together and the potential energy decreases as they move closer. As they continue to move closer, at a certain distance, the net attractive force is exactly balanced by the net repulsive force. Beyond this distance, the repulsive force dominate the attractive forces. So, the atoms by themselves don't move closer than this specific distance. However, if the atoms were forced to move closer than this particular distance, the repulsive force dominate the attractive forces and the energy increases as they move closer. This particular distance at which the net attractive forces are exactly balanced by the net repulsive forces is where the combined energy of two hydrogen atoms is at the minimum. At this distance, the two hydrogens are said to be bonded and the distance between them is called as bond length which is equal to 74 picometers for a hydrogen molecule. The combined energy of the two hydrogen atoms is lower when they are bonded 
when compared to the hydrogen atoms that are isolated. Therefore, when the two hydrogen atoms bond with each other, energy is released and the resultant molecule is more stable than that of individual hydrogen atoms. The energy released in this process is called as bond energy and is equal to the depth of the curve. The energy released when a hydrogen molecule forms from individual hydrogen atoms is equal to 435 kilojoules per mole. Conversely, if you take a hydrogen molecule and break the bond between the two hydrogen atoms, it costs 435 kilojoules per mole of energy. Here are some definitions. The distance at which the combined energy of both the bonding atoms is minimum is called as the bond length. The bond energy corresponds to the depth of the well at this distance. It is defined as the energy required to break a bond and convert the bonded atoms into isolated atoms or the energy released when a bond is formed between isolated atoms. The stronger the bond, the higher is the bond energy. Let us draw the Lewis dot structures of some simple molecules. Let us start with the simplest one, which is hydrogen molecule. We have two hydrogen atoms, each of them with one electron. The nearest noble gas to hydrogen is helium and it has two electrons. Therefore, hydrogen is short of one electron to get the helium's configuration. So each of the hydrogens donates its own electron and the two electrons from those hydrogens form a pair and that particular pair of electrons is shared by both the hydrogens. Now both hydrogens have two electrons and both of them have helium's electronic configuration. The Lewis dot structure of hydrogen molecule is represented as H bond H and the bond represents two electrons. Next, let us draw the Lewis dot structure of fluorine molecule that is F2. Each of the fluorine belongs to group 7, therefore it has 7 valence electrons. three pairs of electrons and one single electron on both of them. Each of them require one electron to get an octet. Those two electrons form a pair and the pair is equally shared between two fluorine atoms. Now each of the fluorines are octet and they are stable. The Lewis dot structure of fluorine molecule looks like F bond F with the remaining pairs of electrons on each of the fluorine atoms. Let us do another example, O2 molecule. Each of the participating oxygens belong to group 6A, therefore it has six valence electrons, that is two single electrons and two pairs of electrons. Each oxygen is short of two electrons to get an octet configuration. Therefore, each oxygen donates two electrons to form two pairs and those two pairs are shared equally between the two oxygen atoms, giving both the oxygens octet configuration. So overall, the Lewis dot structure of oxygen O2 molecule looks like this. Let us do one more example. 
into molecule. Each nitrogen belongs to group 5A. It has 5 electrons in the valence shell. three single electrons and one pair of electron on each of the nitrogens. Each of the nitrogens is short of three electrons per octet configuration. So they donate three electrons and these three pairs of electrons are shared by both the nitrogens. Now each of the nitrogens have octet configuration. The Lewis dot structure of nitrogen looks like this. Now let us define few things here. The electrons that are shared between the two atoms are usually referred to as shared pair or bonding pair. The bonding pair is either represented as a pair of dots or as a line. The outer level electron pair that is not involved in bonding is called as a lone pair or unshared pair or non-bonding pair. For example, F2 molecule has one shared pair or bonding pair between the two fluorine atoms and each fluorine atom have three non-bonding electron pairs. Similarly, the O2 molecule has two bonding pairs that are shared between the two oxygen atoms and each of the oxygen has two non-bonding electron pairs. Next definition, the number of electron pairs that are shared between the two atoms is called as bond order. For example, there is only one electron pair that is shared between the two hydrogen atoms. Therefore, hydrogen molecule has a bond order of 1. O2 molecule in which there are two pairs of electrons that are shared between the two oxygen atoms has a bond order of 2. Similarly, nitrogen molecule in which there are three pairs of electrons that are shared between the two nitrogen atoms has bond order of 3. Usually, the bond lengths are inversely related to bond energies. For example, here I have four molecules HF, HCl, HBr and HI. In all the molecules, hydrogen is constant. The fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine all belong to group 7A or 17. And we know that down the group, the atomic size increases. Therefore, the bond length, that is the internuclear distance between the hydrogen and the halogen, keeps increasing. And if you look at the bond energies, they keep decreasing from fluorine to iodine. For a given pair of atoms, a higher the bond order, the shorter will be its bond length and higher will be its bond energy. For example, here I have three cases in which carbon is connected to oxygen by a single bond, a double bond and a triple bond. The bond order in each case is 1, 2 and 3. As the bond order increases, the bond length decreases starting from 143 picometers to 123 and 113 picometers. And the bond energy increases as the bond order increases, starting from 358 to 745 to 1070 kilojoules per mole. 
Why do you think the bond length decreases as the bond order increases? As the number of electrons that are being shared between the two atoms increase, the force of attraction between the electrons and nuclei of both the atoms increases. Therefore, the bond length between the A and B, that is internuclear distance, decreases and the bond energy increases.